In this video, I'm going to teach you about one of the important concepts in machine learning that is called time series forecasting. In machine learning, there are a lot of problems are there like regression, classification, computer vision. The time series forecasting is one of the important among these. So where we can implement time series forecasting? The time series forecasting concept create high demand on forecasting related problems like weather forecasting, stocks, crypto, mutual funds, and sometimes it is also used in supply chain domains. So learning time series forecasting is very helpful and it will bring you analytical thinking and business knowledge of the field that you are implementing the forecasting algorithm. Suppose if you are in machine learning job by basic you need to be good in statistics and problem solving. But data science is a huge field. The demand of data science is very huge in every domain market. So compared to above two skills, you need to understand more about the particular domain that you are working on. Suppose if your boss wants to predict the upcoming forecasting of crypto, then you should be good in crypto domain. And if you understand the domain completely, then only you can implement the forecasting algorithms into it. Not only in crypto, there are a lot of domains are there that are demanding time series forecasting works. And if you want to be good in time series forecasting, you have to understand the domain expertise and statistics very well. And this is an indeed statement. You cannot avoid the domain expertise and statistics in data field. So this is the short introduction about the time series forecasting. Let's move to this concept more deeply. Just follow this video fully. I can help you to understand these concepts with real time problem solving. Okay, so let's start this video. The main thing that I want to share from this video is not coding. Coding is easy in Python, but other than coding, I want to teach you some prime concepts that are hiding behind the code. That is statistics. So here I took one simple example. Using this, I'm going to forecast airline passenger traffic data set with auto regression methods. Why I'm implementing auto regression means the time series forecasting is highly rely on auto regressive methods. By the way of implementing auto regression, the implementation of auto regression is a base concept in time series forecasting problems. There are a lot of varieties are there in auto regression problems. These concepts that we are going to cover in this segment. But today, I will cover auto regression with airline passenger data set. I will upload the videos on these above topics in my channel. So stay tuned for that updates. And if you are new to this channel, I am currently publishing videos on two playlists. One is Python Android series and the other one is time series forecasting. If you, and if you want to receive these free contents, consider subscribing to my channel. You will receive new videos weekly and that is free of cost. So in the first step of this video, I imported all the libraries that are required for this program. But hold on, some libraries are still there. I will explain those libraries later. In the next cell, I wrote some code. In this code, I'm reading the data set. Look at the cell output. It doesn't has column names. If any data set doesn't has the column names, it doesn't create any meaning. Okay. Now this data set does not mean anything to me. What we have to do is we have to change the column name first. By doing this, we are giving some meaning to the data set. So look at the cell. I wrote the code to change the data column names into the month and passengers. And in the next line, I'm setting the month values to the date format. By default, the month data column consider as a string data. The machine learning time series algorithm won't perform in string data. As a data science knowing person, you should change the format to the supported format. Here I did this step. Let's move to the next cell. You can see here I wrote the code for visualizing the data set of hours. Uh, let's run this cell. And you can see here, this is our data. And are you noticing something different here? Look carefully, our graph is missing in some intervals. It's not a good one for our model. For clearing this one, we have to implement one statistical technique that is called linear interpolation. Linear interpolation is very important one in statistics to find out the missing interval in between two points. For finding the missing intervals, there is one formula you have to know. I will pin the formula in the screen. This formula is known as linear interpolation formula. Basically, you need to feed some values into this. At the end of processing this equation, you can get the value of missing interval. I give you one example here. We have two variables, year and population. Look at this. After 2019, there is one missing year. We have to find the population strength of that particular year. First, we have to choose the values for this equation. So the missing value is 2020. So we can consider 2020 equal to y of x. Okay. So choose 
2019 as your x1 and x2 is your 2021 and y1 is the value under 2019 okay and y2 is the value under 2021 so this is a simple problem to explain the same approach you have to follow for the big problems so that's why data scientist professionals are giving importance to the statistics i guess you know how to process these values in this equation so let's move to the next thing the above problem is our sample one for this problem you don't need to write the large code for implementing linear interpolation for implementing the linear interpolation you need to call one method from pandas that is assign method look at the cell here i called the method and in this method we have to pass the parameter linear interpolate that's all about the implementation we successfully implemented the technique in our data set for checking purpose we have to plot the values in a graph i already wrote the code for this it's a simple one let's run this cell now look at this graph the missing intervals are now closed it means we have successfully implemented the linear interpolation technique so let's move to the next cell in the next cell i replaced the existing data set value with our interpolated values because our existing values are not correct one it has some missing intervals i am merging the interpolated values with our original data set for further processing with the auto regression after processing this cell our entire data set look like this one so this is our current data now we have to conduct some statistical checks so before conducting the statistical checks we have to split the data set into two parts one is for training and another one is for testing for training part i allocated 120 intervals and for testing i allocated remaining 24 intervals of data so let's move to the next cell the next cell is kind of checking our data quality while performing the auto regression we have to check the data is stationary or not stationary means normality of our data for checking the state we are conducting one test here that is called adf or auto digni or auto digni fuller test here i included passenger interpolation data frame into the adf test so let's run this cell you can see here i received three values apart from first two values look at the p value p value simply tells us the probability of being a stationary one it should be below 0.5 value if it is not means our data is not normalized one in our case p value is higher than 0.5 it is not good we have to normalize our values first there are different methods are there in statistics to normalizing the data one of the method is box cox transformation method this transformation method is used to normalize our values so look at this cell i already implemented the box cox on our data set and what we have to do is let's run this cell you can see here this is our new graph look at the values all are normalized now let's run the adf test once more and you can see here our p values is also changed it is less than 0.5 so we can take this test values and process the values to the next level. So before implementing the auto regression technique, you have to understand the formula and concept behind that. Auto regression basically collects previous time lags. After it collect all the previous time lags, it process with this equation. Look close to this equation. Here they took only two previous time lags for calculating the next interval. The time lags are important in this scenario to get some good results at the end. For identifying the time lags, we should perform the correlation techniques. There are two types of correlation techniques are there. The first one is autocorrelation and second one is the partial correlation. The difference between these two is the autocorrelation takes so many indirect parameters and the partial correlation takes only the direct effect parameters. For autoregression, we take only the partial autocorrelation matrix to fix the time lag values. After I processed with box cox transformation, my data frame looked like this. For checking with the partial autocorrelation, I already wrote the code. Here I passed my transformer data into the, into the partial autocorrelation matrix. See here this graph shows the values of first 30 lakhs. Observe these values. Most of the values are above 0.0, .0 value. It means it's a positive correlation. Some values in the graph are negatively correlated, but it is not in the peak stage. So we can take the 30 time lags for processing the auto regression. So we finished the processing steps. Let's import the required libraries for fitting the auto regression algorithm. Next step, I split the data set into two parts. 
I allocated 120 time intervals for training and remaining 24 will be unseen data. That means it is not trained with algorithm. Okay. In the next cell, I connected my data sources with auto regression model and let's run this cell. It prints our prediction for validating this model prediction. You need to run this prediction data with our test data so we can identify the error and accuracy. Here I choose matrix as a root squared mean error. And here I passed my test data and the prediction data into it. Look at this, we got a less error. It is a good one. Next, we have to compare the values through the graph formations. It will easily tell you, tell you how our auto regression model predicts against the test data. Here I plotted the graph against the test data. The prediction is very accurate. So that's all about this video. And if you like my presentation and give like, share and subscribe, it will help me to motivate and it will bring you more new contents like this. So thanks for watching and thank you. See you on next week.